there are few things in this world more badass than this intro to the 1992 X-Men animated series. It's vibrant and bold and exciting, and it says everything there is to say about the X-Men. But it wouldn't hold that same visual energy if it looked like this. With comics, and superhero comics in particular, color is a key component in making the characters iconic and recognizable. In a universe of thousands of characters, you need every available design element to differentiate between them. But color is the most important. If you distill these characters into just their specific color palettes, you'd still have a pretty good idea of who's who. But in this era of bland, muted, lifeless costume design and film, you strip that layer of identity away. See if you can guess who this costume belongs to. We've had 16 years of X-Men films, some great and some not so much. And Apocalypse isn't out yet, so I can only speculate. But why does it seem like the X-Men franchise is almost embarrassed by the X-Men? I actually go outside in these things. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? That line isn't directed towards Wolverine, it's directed at the audience. That was my response to a lot of internet complaining about the... the lack of spandex multicolored costumes, which we tried. In 2012, we even got confirmation from Singer himself that there would be no more black leather costumes in future X-Men films. Finally, we've upgraded to black paintball gear. It's not an issue with the limitations of costume design. That's been proven in Deadpool and partially in X-Men First Class. Except for whatever the hell this was about. It's an issue with the filmmakers and their faith in the material. Because how is full body black leather any more practical than spandex? Now this right here, oh. this this is the first time the actors wore the suits. That on is camera. true, and they could not climb over that concrete divider. They just couldn't do it. They kept uh, Hughes ripped his pants. They fell over. And when the first time they wore them, everyone felt like they were sort of in a body cast. Yeah. And could not hop over that wall without practically falling over. Insane. Nobody could move in this. They have the footage of it. We like tripped and like fall. F we fell flat on our faces, and because we couldn't get our legs high enough with these suits, so you couldn't feel less like a superhero in these costumes. The X Men have a very complicated role in the Marvel universe. They aren't celebrated like other heroes. They're misfits and outcasts and kids on the run, and a lot of them don't have families. Be a normal kid. It's not my fault. And that costume that the students wear is sometimes the only thing that gives them any sense of belonging. It's not just a uniform, it's a symbol of the unification of the group, while also being a representation of individuality. Because that's what being an X-Man is about. It's a celebration of self-identity. Take Nightcrawler, for example. He's a circus performer, and his costume should reflect that. It should be vaudevillian and acrobatic and full of color. There's nothing acrobatic about khakis or a leather trench coat. A costume can say a lot about a character. If you look at Cyclops and Wolverine's classic costumes, they have inverted color schemes to visually represent their opposing roles on the team and their relationship as foils. It's a subtle and clever way to show their conflicting ideologies. And you get all that from just two colors. In some ways, wearing a flashy costume is a tool to battle segregation and the discrimination the mutants are facing by the public. Mutant and proud. And what does proud stand for, if not self-expression? Xavier's goal when designing the original uniforms was to promote cooperation and project a positive public image. He wanted his students to inspire people, like superheroes did. It's the same concept behind police uniforms or firefighters. Black isn't the only serious color, and the X-Men should do more than represent a dated interpretation of cool. This is gonna be about tights. Sorry, Logan, superheroes wear costumes. And quite frankly, all the black leather is making people nervous. Here's a quote from James Mangold, the director of The Wolverine, on why the character doesn't wear his costume. He says that the flesh and blood of the character is loyal to that iconoclastic rebel who doesn't seem to be the first to don spandex. And that by removing the costume, they're trying to stay true to the character. Staying true to a character doesn't mean stripping away the one design element that he's always had since his first appearance 40 years ago. Wolverine wearing his costume is a sign of his loyalty to Xavier's vision and his respect for Cyclops' leadership. The two may butt heads and be at constant odds, but at the end of the day, Logan knows who's in charge. Every now and then, Summers, I remember why you're still in charge. Because throughout history, Wolverine is a soldier, and a soldier knows the importance of a uniform. So if you think that blue and yellow spandex or capes and tall boots are too silly for your film, then you don't take the property seriously. And a true fan takes their interests seriously. If you want to do a darker, real-world spin on these characters, that's fine. By all means, fulfill your vision. But don't say it's because it wouldn't work on film, because it does, and it has, and it will continue to. 
these characters should stay authentic, because they mean a lot to a lot of people. And I think there should be a certain level of responsibility when adapting these properties, because these characters are a result of decades of work from creators who've shaped and molded them into the icons that we know today. When people have been doing things like this in cosplay for years, there's no excuse not to do it in film. But overall, I'm excited for the future of the X-Men franchise, because if they've learned anything from Deadpool, it's that costumes can be comic accurate without looking like they came from a Halloween store.